Mr. Speaker, I rise today in strong support of final passage of S. 3406, the Americans with Disabilities Act Amendments of 2008. Since 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act has provided protection from discrimination for millions of productive, hardworking Americans so that they may fully participate in our nation's schools, communities, and workplace. Among other rights, the law guarantees that workers with disabilities will be judged on their merits and not on the employer's prejudice. But since the ADA's enactment, several Supreme Court rulings have dramatically reduced the number of individuals with disabilities who are protected from discrimination under the law. Workers like Carrie McClure, an electrician with muscular dystrophy, who testified before our committee in January, have not been have not been hired or passed over by promotion by an employer regarding them as too disabled to do the job. Yet when these workers seek justice for this discrimination, the courts rule that they are not disabled enough to be protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act. This is terrible, a terrible catch-22 that Congress will change with the passage of this bill today. S-3406, like it like H.R. 3195 passed in June, remedies this Catch-22 situation in several ways by reversing flawed court decisions to restore the original congressional intent of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Workers with disabilities who have, have been discriminated against will no longer be denied their civil rights as a result of these erroneous court decisions. To do this, S-3406 reestablishes the scope and protections of the Americans with Disabilities Act to, a, to be generous and inclusive. The bill restores the proper focus on whether discrimination occurred rather than on whether or not the individual's impairment qualifies as a disability. S-3406 ensures that individuals who reduce the impact of their impairments means such as hearing aids, medications, learned behavioral modifications will be considered in their unmitigated state. For people with epilepsy, diabetes, and other conditions who have successfully managed the disability, this means the end of, of, of the Catch-22 situation that Carrie McClure and so many others have encountered when attempting to seek justice. For our, for our returning war veterans with disabilities, SR 34606 will ensure that the transition to civilian life will not include another battle here at home, a battle against discrimination on the basis of disability and students with physical and mental impairments will have access to accommodations and modifications they need to successfully pursue an education. Much of the language contained in 3406 is identical to the House passed H.R. 3195. This includes provisions concerning mitigating measures, episodic conditions, major life activities, treatment of claims under the, quote, regarded as, unquote, prong, regulatory authority for the definition of disability and conforming amendments to Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. We expect that the courts and agencies to apply the, the less demanding standard when interpreting substantially limits. S-3406 directs the, co the courts and the agencies to interpret the term consistent with the findings and purposes of the ADA Act amendments. amendments. We, we intend that the ADA Amendments Act will reduce the depth of analysis related to the severity of the limitation of the impairment and return the focus to where it should be, the question of whether or not discrimination based upon disability actually occurred. This legislation has broad supports, Democrats and Republicans, employers, the civil rights groups and the advocates for individuals with disabilities. I'm pleased that we were able to work together to get to this point. In particular, I'd like to thank members of the Employer and Disability Alliance, including the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, the Epilepsy Foundation, the American Association of People with Disabilities, Chamber of the National Association of Manufacturers, the Society of Human Resources Management, for all of their hard work and long hours of negotiations with each other and, and with our staff. And of course, much credit goes to is due to Majority Leader Steny Hoyer and Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner for their leadership and tenacity in the House. Senator Harkin, Senator Kennedy, Senator Hatch for their skills in moving this legislation through the Senate with unanimous support. It's time to restore the original intent of the ADA and ensure that tens of millions of Americans with disabilities who want to work, attend school, and fully participate in our communities will have a chance to do so. I look, passage of, look forward to the passage of this legislation. I encourage my colleagues to support it and reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen, reserves this time.